Hello, I'm State Senator John Kavanaugh, and welcome to another edition of Kavanaugh's Corner, my legislative video report to my constituents on what I'm doing at the Arizona State Legislature. And this Kavanaugh's Corner report is for the week of February 19th. So let's begin with the bills. Uh, first, out of the Appropriations Committee, my SB 1244, Appropriation for the Crime Victim Notification Fund, was passed out. This will give money to a special fund that will be used to more efficiently uh, reach crime victims to notify them about the status of the uh, person who victimized them if they were victims, uh, when the person is going to be in court, if the person's out on bail, if the person's been released from prison. It also tells victims when they need to go to court to testify or when there's a hearing involving the case they might want to watch. This is mandated by the Constitution, and this will automate it so that these notifications can go out by text, uh, message, and email to keep these victims up to date. My second bill, Criminal Justice Data Collection System, appropriates money to improve the database that has all of the arrest, prosecution, and conviction data from our criminal justice system. This will organize the information so that researchers and public policy people like myself will have better access to data to help us guide our decisions in the criminal justice system. On the floor, I had a number of bills go up for third read. Uh, this means that the bills were voted out by a majority of the full chamber and will be heading over to the Arizona House to go through the same process they went through here. That process being being passed out of committee, going to the committee of the whole, and then hopefully being uh, adopted on the final read and then sent to the governor. So the first of my bills that cleared the uh, third read in the Senate is SB 1021. This bill requires the Arizona Attorney General to defend legal challenges to the laws that the legislature passes and the governor signs. Last uh, session, uh, Attorney General Brnovich refused to defend one of my bills that dealt with uh, keeping a safe distance away from officers uh, who are involved in arrest and other dangerous activities from being videotaped by people with cell phones. That bill was passed out, was signed, the ACLU challenged it, and Attorney General Brnovich refused to defend it, which pretty much meant it was dead. It stays enjoined by a federal judge. This will require the Attorney General to defend state laws because that's what the Attorney General is supposed to do. That's his or her job. However, if something comes up and there's news that the, the, the law has real problems, a majority vote of the Judiciary Committees in both chambers can relieve the Attorney General of that responsibility. My next bill has to do with residential picketing. In other words, when people do <coughs> picketing and protesting in front of people's homes, often elected officials or judges. Now, this is already illegal, but there was a serious flaw in the law. It only made it illegal to picket in front of someone's home when the picketing is annoying or alarming or threatening. It only did that if the person or persons doing the picketing believed that it was such. But some of these people are just antisocial. And besides, how could you prove that they knew it was alarming to the people inside? So I'm simply applying a objective criteria. The, the view of the person picketing is subjective in the view of the subject who's committing the act. An objective, a, an objective criteria means would a reasonable average citizen think it was annoying? So we're going to switch that so that we can prosecute people who picket and demonstrate in front of judges or elected officials' homes, uh, alarming them and their families and the neighborhood. The next bill is SB 1024, Public Rights of Way Unlawful Acts. This is very simple. This says that you can't pitch a tent and camp or a similar structure in a street right of way. Uh, these homeless encampments that are popping up, especially in Phoenix, all along the side of the roadway, they're unsafe, they're filthy, they're often crime ridden, ridden. there's crime victimization inside, drug use, and they obstruct traffic and people on the sidewalk. So we're gonna make that illegal. The next bill is SB 1036 involves the setting aside of convictions. For certain crimes, a person, after they've finished their sentence and perhaps performed some rehabilitative actions, 
can ask a judge <coughs> to basically remove the conviction record. The intent when this law was passed to let people do it for, for more than one misdemeanor, but uh, for more than one misdemeanor and only one felony. But they wrote the wrong, the law the wrong way. And under the current law, you can do it for as many felony arrests as you have, as you have, but only one misdemeanor. So we're going to switch it back to the way it's supposed to be. Only one felony for this second chance, uh, but more than one misdemeanor, because misdemeanors are less serious. SB 1049, Homeowners Association's Betsy Ross flag. No legislative session would be complete without a bill attempting to curb the abuses of dictatorial HOA boards. Uh, this year I was contacted by a constituent who said that their HOA board would not let them fly the Betsy Ross flag. Now, Arizona law says you can fly an American flag in an HOA. They can't stop you from doing that. This HOA was claiming that the Betsy Ross flag was not an American flag, which is wrong, by the way, because it is. It was one of the first American flags. So this bill simply says that, that not only have you a right to do the American flag, you can do any version of the American flag, including the Betsy Ross flag. SB 1060 is one of my humane animal bills. It simply alters the definition of a stray dog to include one that not only uh, doesn't have a collar, but doesn't have a microchip. Your dog may be lost, the collar may come off of the dog or cat, uh, and that would be technically a stray dog who could be picked up and taken to a pound and, and uh, in some cases euthanized uh, if, if nobody's there to pick him up. Uh, because many pet owners put microchips in their pets, this would require that the microchip be checked for, and if there is a microchip, then the note would be onified. So a dog, even without a collar, with a microchip is not a stray. Uh, SB 1067 <coughs> is a study committee on animal control standards. Uh, we have large dog pounds, small dog pounds. Some of them are reasonably run. Some of them are, have horrible conditions. There's been a lot of problems at the Maricopa, Maricopa County dog pound recently. So we're trying to get some standards for the appropriate care of animals in pounds. And this would involve not only medical care, but how many square feet per animal, things like that. And we're going to bring in all sorts of animal control individuals, you know, the dog catchers, people who, who run animal pounds, people from the humane community. And in the interim between this session and next session, see if we can come up with some recommendations. Maybe not mandates, but at least standards to guide these uh, these pounds so they can go to a more humane goal of care. Uh, SB 1174, average daily membership student withdrawals. Again, due to a quirk in the law, uh, if a student was absent from school without the parent having reported it during uh, any of the last 10 days, the school would not get funding for that day for that student. That is not the way it works the rest of the year. The rest of the year, you only have a withdrawal of a student if, in fact, they miss 10 days without a verification or a notification by the parents. And if they missed less than that, the school still got reimbursed for those days for that student being there. So now we're going to say, regardless of when a student misses a day, as long as they're not being withdrawal for having 10 or more unexcused absences, the school gets paid. Uh, SCR 1001. Uh, is the final bill that went out on the floor, uh, and that is violent crime evidence-based strategies. Now, this is not SB 1001, this is SCR. It's Senate Concurrent Resolution 1001. Uh, and this is basically a statement by the Senate that says, we believe in evidence-based crime reduction strategies, that we do not believe in defunding the police, that we should use uh, crime control techniques that research has shown are, are successful, like targeting high-risk offenders. We also, uh, it also says we should have some sort of mental health expertise in responding to people with mental health programs, have better trained police officers, and a host of other best practices that police departments are engaged in throughout the country. Simply a statement uh, which will be urging all of our police departments to kick it up a notch, as Emeril Lagasse would say, and improve the criminal justice system. Well, that's it for this week. Uh, next week, we'll be hearing a lot more bills. Uh, we're hearing all of the bills that were passed out for the past few weeks in committees and finishing them up, because by the end of next week, we want to have all of the Senate bills that pass 
over in the House because they'll have all of their bills over in the Senate and then we'll start the whole committee process of vetting those bills uh, all over again. And there'll be many, many more Kavanaugh's Corners to keep you up on what's happening at the state legislature. And I'm your state senator, John Kavanaugh. Thank you for watching.